Chapter 7 of Our Little Jewish Cousin. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Our Little Jewish Cousin by Mary Hazelton Blanchard Wade. Chapter 7 The Cave. Which way did you come? asked Levi, as he helped the two little girls down from the ass's back. Solomon had walked by their side all the way. We passed through the Jaffa Gate, and then took the shortest way down here into the valley, said Esther. Jerusalem is surrounded by walls. There are seven gates through which the city may be entered or left, but the Jaffa and Damascus gates are the ones most used. We saw a Bedouin riding a beautiful horse. He was in full dress and looked just elegant, said Solomon. I should like to own a horse like his. Tell me how he was dressed, said Rebecca. His long, wide cloak must have been quite new. I could tell, because the yellow stripes looked so clean and bright. The shawl bound around his head and hanging down over his shoulders was pure white, said Miriam. His high red leather boots were the handsomest part of his dress. There were tassels at the sides, of course, interrupted Solomon. But his sash! You ought to have seen the shining dagger and the pistol that were stuck in it. My, the man looked as though he were ready to meet anyone. His horse was a beauty, too. She was decked with red woolen tassels that reached clear to the ground. She snorted and stepped off with the spirit of a war horse. You know the tassels are useful in keeping off the flies. There are such swarms of them. The poor beasts suffer very much. But come along, children. I know you want to have a romp under the trees. You need not stay here talking any longer. While Levi was speaking, Rebecca put her arm around Miriam's waist and tried to make her feel at home. She had not been to Jerusalem since the little orphan had come to live with Esther and Solomon. She is a sweet child, she thought, not as strong as Esther nor as brave as Solomon, but she will be grateful for kindness. I feel sure of that when I look into her eyes. In a few minutes, Rebecca and Levi were playing with their young company as though they were children themselves. Tomorrow we will have a little picnic and I will take you to a cave you have never visited, promised Levi, as his young visitors were bidding him good night. It is a pleasant walk there, and not so far as to tire us, added Rebecca. The next morning was bright and clear. The breakfast was soon eaten, after which Esther and Miriam helped Rebecca clean up the house and prepare the lunch they were to carry. While they were waiting for Levi and Solomon to finish some farm work, the little girls had a chance to pet the gazelle and the tame sheep of which Rebecca had written them. At last they were all ready to start. It was a pleasant walk, as Rebecca had said, yet there were several rough and rather wild places to pass through. Almost all the caves around here are made of limestone, said Levi. It is so soft that the rains wear great hollows in the rocks. Did you ever go to the cave of Adullam, Levi? asked Solomon. Yes, once when I was a boy. It is beyond Bethlehem. I had heard father speak of it. He told me that King David hid there with four hundred of his followers. Four hundred? It must be a very big cave, then, said Esther. You would think so, if you once got inside. There is one hall that is thirty-eight yards long. There are several passages leading into it. Some are so low that one has to crawl through them on his hands and knees. Others spread out into large chambers. Many of these chambers are very beautiful. The water has trickled down the walls and worn the soft limestone into the loveliest patterns. How could you see, Levi? Wasn't it dark inside the cave? asked Solomon. Of course it was, but every one in the party carried a lighted torch or candle. The torches gave light enough to show the beautiful ornaments. There is our own cave ahead of us, said Rebecca. Of course I mean it is the one we are to visit, she added with a laugh. All the children could see was a great mass of rocks on the side of a hill. As they drew nearer, they spied a small hole near the ground. Must we crawl through that hole? asked Esther with a shiver. It is larger than you imagine, replied Levi. Besides, you only have to crawl a few feet. After that, the way opens up quite suddenly. I will go first with my torch, then you can all follow. I am afraid, Miriam whispered to Esther. She did not wish Solomon to hear her. She feared he would make fun of her. Hold on to my hand and have courage. I will go ahead of you, was the answer. One by one they passed through the opening. 
Isn't this fun? cried Solomon, as they all stood in the chamber worn out of the rocks. It makes me feel queer to think of being underground, said Esther. Hark! What's that noise? said Miriam, in a frightened voice. It's only a family of bats we have taken by surprise. They are not used to callers, said Levi. The bats were more frightened than Miriam. They flew about in a blind way. Several times they almost brushed against the faces of Rebecca and Levi, the tallest ones of the party. Ugh! I don't like bats, said Miriam. I am going outside. Just wait a minute until I see if there are any pretty decorations on the walls. Look, here is just what I was searching for. Levi held his torch up near the roof. Isn't it beautiful? How can nature work in such a regular pattern, said Rebecca, half to herself. It is because she is the handmaiden of the Lord, replied Levi, reverently. After they had left the cave and were once more out in the bright sunshine, the children were allowed to choose a place for the picnic dinner. They had brought water for bathing the hands and face, as well as for drinking. Levi had told them before they started that there was no well or spring near the place. After they had washed and prayed, they were all ready to enjoy the nice luncheon Rebecca had prepared. Tell us stories about King David, won't you? Please, Levi, asked Solomon. When you spoke of the cave of Adullam this morning, you said David hid there with a great many of his followers. I suppose that made me think of him now. I should like nothing better, said Levi, stretching himself out on the ground. But would you all like to hear about the sweet singer of Israel? Indeed we would, sounded a chorus of voices. End of chapter 7